Rick Welts, welcome. Thank you. It's been about three years since you came out. Uh, you were with uh, the Phoenix Suns at the time. Tell me what's been going through your mind in these last two weeks as you've seen Michael Sam with his revelation. Well, uh, it's 2014, so my conversations with him have been by text. I haven't actually <laughs> met him yet, but we've had some interesting conversations. Uh, I think it's just absolutely remarkable uh, what's transpired over the last three years. I think. Uh, this is kind of uh, an exclamation point on the things that have happened in our society and certainly in sports over the last three years. And I think, you know, we, we have a very special moment happening right now and one that I think a lot of people are going to be paying close attention what to. What are these coaches and these GMs going to be looking for this weekend in Indianapolis and besides how quickly he can run the 40-yard dash? Well, I think a lot of it is about character. Uh, they want players on their teams that fit the profile of, of the type of people that they're looking for. And I think that means uh, you want to look inside a guy and understand what makes him tick. And I think Michael Sam happens to be uniquely suited to play the part that he signed up for here. What are they going to be looking for from him that they might not otherwise be lo have been looking for now that he's out? Well, I think, you know, there's every team will be looking for something a little bit different. But I think what he's proven by doing what he's done so far, uh, especially with his team in Missouri, where he confided in his teammates a year ago, uh, he went through a full season of, of football and did incredibly well. Uh, I think he's proven uh, maybe that he is the right guy to, to be in the position that he's in today. It's been over a year since Jason Collins came mm -hmm. out. Uh, he was a free agent at the time, but had been in the NBA for 12 years with, I think, six different teams. And at the time when he came out, you said, and I'm quoting, that more doors will open for him than will close. Uh, and yet he hasn't played another game in the NBA. I'm wondering, do you feel that his coming out closed a door to the NBA for him? Well, I, I think it's one of those questions we'll never know. He did this at the very end of his career. Uh, He's only 34 years old. Well, but, but in NBA years. He didn't think years, it was the end of his career. Right. In NBA years, that's, that's quite old. And for a player who'd been marginally contributing over the course of the previous two seasons, right? So I don't know that we'll ever know that. I think if you talk to him, uh, as I do, I think he has had a lot of doors open uh, personally as well as professionally, just don't happen to be on the basketball court. He was, as you said, I, want, I don't want to say a marginal player, but he wasn't, uh, he wasn't LeBron right. and he wasn't Kobe. Uh, so I'm wondering, does that mean that teams look at these situations as is it worth, is he worth the trouble that it's going to bring? You know, I don't think you can generalize that across every team. Uh, every team has different ownership. Every team has different management. And I think uh, there, I have no doubt that there were teams in the NBA who looked at the situation and said, you know, that may, might be more than we want to sign up for right now. But I also believe there are teams in the NBA, uh, as I hope there are NFL teams with Michael Sam, who can look way beyond that and realize that this is about winning games. And if a player can help win games, he can be on our roster. When uh, Jason Collins came out, the coach of the Warriors, Mark uh, Jackson, said that as a Christian man, I have beliefs of what's right and what's wrong. He said, on the other hand, I know Jason Collins and his family. I'm praying for them. That, to me, did not sound like open arms for an openly gay player for the Warriors. Did that comment from the coach disappoint you? Yes. And uh, Mark and I have the kind of relationship where we could have a conversation about that. And I think, you know, that was in some way taken out of context. And I think, uh, you know, Mark and I are in a really good place right now. And I, I think that, uh, you know, how he feels about the issue is, is not inconsistent with what we would hope uh, as any employee of the Warriors. And I think that he, uh, he probably didn't say it exactly the way he wished he'd said it at the time. So it did disappoint me. But I think since uh, we certainly talked it out and uh, we're in a good place. I want to ask you a question about the Warriors arena proposed for the San Francisco waterfront. Originally, you were hoping to be in the city in that arena for the 2017 season. That's now been pushed back. Uh, what's the status of it? Uh, full speed ahead is the status. Uh, it's pushed back because we're doing exactly what we promised to do. And we promised to take every bit of regulatory input, every bit of public input. Uh, we're now in our third complete design of the project. There are not enough days between now and 2017 to get through the CEQA and environmental impact uh, report process. So we're going to open in 2018, but we're full speed ahead. Have you been surprised by the pushback, the mood in the city about development that we saw in the last election? Uh, we certainly expected complications. Uh, it is San Francisco, after all. Uh, I don't think anyone really could foresee kind of this shift in, in attitude toward development 
in the city, uh, shifting from some of the topics that we've been focused on to the issue of affordability in the city. I think that's, that's a new development that I'm not sure anyone saw coming. So we're, listen, this is the process we signed up for. There are no shortcuts to it. We've completely embraced it. We're completely committed to bringing the Warriors to San Francisco. You said that we have to get it right, not do it quickly. Uh, that suggests that the original plan, there was something wrong with it. Uh, what would you say to that? Well, I can say that we've made it better. I actually think the process has worked. We've taken over a million cubic feet of volume out of the site. We've increased the open space from something that started at about 40% to now 60%. We're building a new seven acre park for San Francisco. We're giving people back 13 acres of waterfront that right now is behind a chain link fence. Uh, we have more maritime activity than we had originally. The building's not as tall as it was originally. So I think all these things through this process, the process actually works. We've got a better project today and one that I think uh, will serve everyone in San Francisco and the Bay Area very well for decades to come. All right, Rick Welts, thanks. Good luck to you and the Warriors this Thank year. Thank you.